Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry BCCI's newly elected chairman, Samir Abdullah Nas. His Majesty wished Nas success in consolidating the progress of the BCCI and emphasizing its active role in supporting the economic development in Bahrain. His Majesty congratulated the new members of the BCCI board and wished them further success and progress. His Majesty the King also congratulated the new members of the BCCI board, wishing them success. He also praised the elections that were characterized by integrity, transparency and free choice and lauded the great efforts to ensure their success. His Majesty the King lauded the important achievements made by the BCCI since its establishment and the pioneering role it plays in serving the commercial and industrial process in Bahrain and enhancing its distinguished economic and investment position regionally and globally. His Majesty expressed his pride in the role of the Bahraini business community and its members who took upon themselves to serve this important sector, develop its performance and follow in the footsteps of the Bahrainis who preceded them and who contributed to building Bahrain's progress. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also sent a cable of congratulations to the newly elected Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI, Samir Abdullah Nas. His Royal Highness wished the Chairman success and highlighted the private sector's role in furthering the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of strengthening the partnership with the private sector through various projects and development plans. His Royal Royal Highness also congratulated the newly elected BCCI members and wished them further success. His Royal Highness affirmed the Kingdom's commitment to continue supporting the private sector to achieve the Bahrain Economic Vision of 2030. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to Sonia Janahi, Sousan Abul Hassan, and Betul Dadabai following their success in winning the membership of the 30th Board of Directors of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI. Her Royal Highness said that their victory, which is a source of pride, reflects the successful efforts and landmark achievements of Bahraini women in all fields. Her Royal Highness wished the new BCCI female board members every success in contributing to enhancing the national economy, as well as highlighting the effective role of Bahraini women as essential partners in the sustainable comprehensive development march in the kingdom. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation brief His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa met and honored the companies, institutions and banks that sponsored His Highness's International Endurance Championship in the presence of the President of Brief, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Al Mu'ayyad. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that His Majesty's directives are a guide to build a strong sports movement that is capable to highlighting Bahraini abilities in international events. His Highness also hailed the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. His Highness Sheikh Nasser recalled His Majesty the King's words for supporting the equestrian sports, especially endurance sports, hailing the support of his sponsors to His Highness's International Endurance Championship. He affirmed that this support contributes to the advancement of the endurance sports and to the success of the championship. He added that the sponsors are a vital partner in the development to which all aspires. His Honor Sheikh Nasser stated that the support of the sponsors contributes to the implementation of brief strategy to support riders and stables to achieve the best technical levels. For their part, the representatives of the sponsors expressed pride in their contribution to His Highness's Sheikh Nasser's International Endurance Championship, praising His Highness's words that affirmed their keenness on supporting endurance championships. They lauded the role of brief presidents in the success of the championship.
The President of Indonesia, Yoko Widodo, met with the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fauzia Zainal, on the sidelines of the opening of the 144th General Assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Union, the IPU, held in Bali. The Indonesian President expressed pride in the close friendship relations between his country and Bahrain, stressing the cooperation and coordination witnessed by the two friendly countries in various fields. Bahrain Parliamentary Division affirmed that the meeting of the IPU are of particular importance due to the parliamentary discussion and multiple dialogues that they witness on issues and topics that contribute to achieving greater growth and prosperity for countries and people. The division noted that the IPU General Assembly is considered the largest parliamentary gathering where heads and representatives of parliaments in the countries of the world meet to discuss means and mechanisms for achieving sustainable development goals in addition to considering issues and developments in the international arena. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives and President of the Arab Inter-Parliamentary Union, Fauzia Zainal, participated in the joint meeting between the heads of the geopolitical parliamentary groups and the chairs of standing committees of the Inter-Parliamentary Union, which was held in Bali as part of the 144th General Assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Union. The geopolitical parliamentary group have adopted the initiative of Zainal regarding the development of a unified indicative project that expresses the vision of parliaments on the issues of climate and submitting it to the Global Climate Summit, which will be held in the UAE next year. They supported the initiative of Zainal stressing its importance in consolidating the role of parliaments on various common issues and topics. She stressed that the project is a translation of the aspirations of the people and reflects the positive contribution of parliaments in facing the challenges facing countries, noting that the project serves as an effective parliamentary action plan to confront the risks of climate change. Bahrain's Parliamentary Division delegation participated in the coordination meeting of the Islamic Parliamentary Group in the Inter-Parliamentary Union. They reviewed all topics on the agenda of the IPU Assembly and discussed the most important Arab and Islamic issues to exchange views and coordinate positions on them. The delegation affirmed that the legislative authority in Bahrain is working according to mechanisms aimed at strengthening joint Arab and Islamic cooperation and coordination. During the participation of Bahrain's parliamentary division in the meeting of the Parliamentary Women's Office and the Forum of Women Parliamentarians, the member of Bahrain's parliamentary division delegation and first deputy president of the Parliamentary Women's Office, Hala Ramzi, affirmed that parliaments and legislative councils are committed to supporting laws and regulations that guarantee the advancement of women and gender balance, noting that legislation is one of the pillars in consolidating women's rights and enhancing their role and responsibilities in implementing development strategies and plans. The Shura Council held its weekly session presided over by its chairman Ali Al Saleh. The council approved Decree by Law Number 20 of 2021, amending a number of provisions of Commercial Companies Law, which aims to enable the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism to keep pace with the rapid developments in business environments and remove obstacles for companies that fear disclosing the rewards of their executive management for fear of competition. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, held an official session of talks today with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Singapore, Dr. Vivian Balak Rashnan, who is on a visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. At the beginning of the meeting, the Minister of Foreign Affairs welcomed Dr. Balak Rashnan, praising the distinguished friendship relations between Bahrain and Singapore and its developments, as well as the two countries' common desire to promote bilateral cooperation in various fields. Dr. Zayani also affirmed the Kingdom's interest in in further developing joint cooperation between the two countries to meet common aspirations and achieve mutual interests, especially in the economic investment and trade fields and the various service sectors and in opening opportunities for joint cooperation to the private sector in both countries. For his part, the Singaporean Foreign Minister expressed his pleasure in visiting the Kingdom, lauding the generous hospitality and warm reception he received. He noted the historical friendship between Bahrain and Singapore, which extends back to several decades of mutual respect and joint cooperation, stressing the interest of Singapore in developing bilateral cooperation relations with the point Bahrain in various fields to serve the interests of the two friendly countries. 
The two sides discussed the course of the close friendly relations between the two countries, ways of promoting bilateral cooperation in the economic and development fields, continuing to active memoranda of understanding and agreements between the two countries and joint coordination in international forums to serve the common interest of the two friendly countries and people. They also discussed the political, security and economic developments at the regional and international levels and their repercussions on international peace and security, in addition to topics and issues of common interest. The Minister of Housing, Engineer Basim Al Hamar, revealed that the Ministry has completed the first phase of implementing the foundations of 16 residential towers in the city of Selman, which provides 1,382 apartments, noting that the completion rates on the site amounted to 27%. The Minister said that the residential towers are being built according to the designs of the sixth generation of residential buildings. Al Hamar stressed that the engineering effort reflects the level of advanced planning and efficiency in managing housing projects in the kingdom. He explained that the project accomplished about 1,500,000 man hours without accidents or injuries. The minister highlighted the ministry's observance of the need to rely on providing sustainable standards such as green energy and environmentally friendly building materials and providing a safe and modern environment commensurate with the need of beneficiaries to achieve the highest quality level. Levels. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Minister Zayed bin Rashid Zayani, affirmed the importance of joint work to revitalize the national economy during the post-pandemic period. On the occasion of the 30th Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, BCCI board elections, Zayani expressed aspirations to step in cooperation with the new BCCI board. BCCI announced the results of its election for boards of directors with a victory of 18 members. Information Affairs Minister Ali bin Mohammed al ramehi praised the success of the Bahrain International Circuit, the BIC, the home of motorsports in the Middle East, in hosting the Formula One race for the 18th year amid the availability of an advanced system of organizational, logistical, security and media services. While visiting BIC to follow up on the media coverage of the 2022 Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix, the minister expressed pride in the ongoing cooperation of the Information Affairs Ministry with the BIC and the relevant government departments to provide the necessary media and technical services to reporters of local and international media outlets to ensure a distinguished coverage of the international sporting competition and its accompanying events. Aramehe underlined the Information Affairs Ministry's keenness to provide a comprehensive and outstanding media coverage of the 2022 F1 Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix as well as highlighting the action-packed programs held on the sidelines of the event through direct radio and television shows and interviews in addition to reports. He pointed out that the success of the Formula One Bahrain Grand Prix has over the years contributed to making the kingdom the focus of the world's attention, enhancing its sports, tourism and media gains and confirming Bahrain's distinguished ability to host mega international events. Erramehe affirmed that the kingdom continues to reap the fruits of the pioneering project of BIC, which has started in 2000. 2004, thanks to the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Citing the positive impact of the Bahrain F1 Grand Prix on the aviation industry, transportation and tourism, as well as its contributions to increasing the development gains attained by the Kingdom during the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Halal Ansari, participated in the inaugural session of the Gulf Women Leadership for a Sustainable Tomorrow Forum. Al Ansari emphasized the importance of this forum, which is organized by Saudi Arabia's Council for Family Affairs and the GCC General Secretariat in response to a proposal submitted by the SCW to consult with the two parties in this regard. She addressed the necessity of coordinating GCC positions regarding women's issues and in international 
platforms and organizations. She also said that through form that the kingdom hopes to come up with a unified framework for coordinating positions between GCC countries towards various issues. She noted that Bahrain made some proposals in this regard and recommended to develop a unified Gulf Index to measure the impact of women's participation in the national economy. The meetings of the World Motorsports Council, the WMSC, which took place this weekend, concluded at the Four Seasons Hotel, coinciding with the hosting of the Bahrain International Circuit, the home of motorsports in the Middle East for the Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix. President of the International Automobile Federation, the FIA, Mohammed bin Slayem, chaired the meeting of the president of the World Motorsports Council in the presence of the Bahrain Motor Federation president and the FIA vice president for the Middle East in North Africa, Sheikh Abdullah bin Isa Al Khalifa, as well as WMSC members and FIA heads of committees. The FIA president expressed his thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Bahrain for the generous hospitality and warm welcome for hosting the WMSC meeting. The meeting reviewed the World Championships calendar for motorsports and Formula One races, in addition to discussing proposals, numbers of laws, and latest developments in the world of motorsports. As part of the Ministry of Interior's efforts to provide the facilities at Bahrain International Circuit and contribute to the success of the Formula One Grand Prix, the participation of a number of the Ministry's directorates in Formula One events showcases the latest security technologies and devices. The Kingdom of Bahrain has achieved tremendous success in hosting and organizing the Bahrain Grand Prix Formula One races. It was very good. The road was so good. We had a bus uh, transfer to the circuit. The entrance was very nice. Um, I see uh, a lovely police car. They look very fast <laughs> and it looks very nice. Yeah, it looks very cool. Um, actually, we came from exhibition and then coming here, it was very easy. Like there's no traffic and then the policemen, they are very helpful because uh, we are looking for our parking, but they are there to help us. It was very nice. Thank you so much. The visitors also witnessed an atmosphere of fun and entertainment at the conclusion of the Formula One races. The whole way I've seen like people from the police around, military, everybody seemed pretty sharp and it was already, even like security here, everything seemed pretty safe. So uh, you feel, when you come here, you feel pretty safe and secure and everything seems pretty organized. This continuous success comes as a result of the readiness and professionalism of the Ministry of Interior and the expertise that had a large impact on highlighting the international race in an honorable and impressive manner. Portobello Road Market is the world's largest antiques market with over 1,000 dealers selling every kind of antique and collectibles. Tourists and visitors come from all over the world to discover one of London's best landmarks which had the most extensive selection of antiques in Britain. More in this report. Known for its second-hand jewelries and antiques, Portobello Market is buzzing with pubs, restaurants and a diverse range of communities. However, nearly 300 years ago, it was a very different place. I was born and bred here on Portobello Road, so I know it very well. And it, it used to be uh, called Portobello Lane as there was a farm called Portobello Farm right at the end, two miles down the road and lots of orchards, and people used to bring their wares up here to the main London, to Covent Garden, to sell their fruit and vegetables. And they'd stop their horses here and, and water them. The market was originally a farm named after a town of Portobello in Panama, captured by the British from the Spanish defenders in 1739. What makes it special? Well, firstly, all the shops, You've got really unique shops and I love them so much. Also, the people, we've got a community on this road, so every time I walk down this road, I say hi to people and they've all become like my friends. The food at the bottom of the road is amazing. So if you get a chance to go eat that food, it's a bit overwhelming actually because there's so many options, but yeah, you should go. Honestly, my favourite road in London. This is why I moved from Manchester to Notting Hill for Portobello Market. 
In 1940s, the area was the passageway for many who stopped to water their horses. Then, more and more men started selling their wares, soon joined by other traders, specializing in antiques, which have become what the market is best known for today. Portobello Road Market has one of the most famous street markets in the world and is home to one of the UK's most diverse communities, a rich history, with millions of visitors each year. Here, where you can experience a mile of hustle, haggle, colour and energy. Dating back to 19th century, Portobello Market is one of the oldest markets in London, buzzing with a range of different communities, pubs, food, antiques, jewellery, clothes, and also lots of stories to tell in this city. Bara Al-Azawi, Bahrain TV, London.